Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the personality profile of Ebenezer Scrooge, who of course is a character in an 1843 novel called A Christmas Carol? So I did receive this question a little while ago, but I thought it made more sense to answer it now, Christmas Eve than sometime in the summer. I think it came in in the summer. So the five-factor model has five big traits of personality. I remember them through the acronym OCEAN. Openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. So theoretically, of course, everybody scores at different levels on these traits. Everybody has a five-factor model profile. And again, the question is, what would be the five-factor profile of Ebenezer Scrooge, this fictional character in the novel Christmas Carol. So this is interesting because we have a lot of information about Ebenezer Scrooge from the book. We have kind of an initial picture of him, then we have some information from his past. So he looked a little bit different in the past in terms of his personality. And then of course he makes a big change toward the end of the book. So I'm not really going to talk about that part, but more what was his profile in the beginning. So when he was visited by the ghost of Jacob Marley, Jacob Marley was his business partner who had passed away some years before. So if we look at some of the characteristics we can pick up by reading the novel, looking at Ebenezer Scrooge, we see that he's miserly, greedy, unkind, uncaring, rigid, bitter, angry, and he also appears to be isolated. Of course, that's in the beginning not necessarily again toward the end. That's a different area. So there are some traits there we can line up pretty easily with the five-factor model, but I also want to include here his past. Of course that would have occurred before he was visited by the ghost of Jacob Marley. So looking here at the five-factor model starting with openness to experience, I would say overall that this is the hardest one to conceptualize in terms of Ebenezer Scrooge's behavior because it appears to be low, right? The traits appear to be indicative of low openness to experience. So being rigid, not really caring about art, not having an imagination, things like that. But we see that when Ebenezer was younger, he did appear to experience emotions intensely and to be more artistic and creative and imaginative. So I would say low in the moment, what we see when He's visited by the ghost of Jacob Marley, but I don't know if he was always low. So now moving on to conscientiousness, this one is arguably the easiest one to conceptualize in terms of Ebenezer. I would say high on all six facets of conscientiousness. A couple of facets really stand out here with conscientiousness, including achievement striving and order. So Ebenezer appears to want to get the job done. He appears to be assertive and active in business, and he also likes things to be orderly. So I would say high conscientiousness. So extroversion, I think this one is a little different. This one is split. We certainly see some low scores here in extroversion, I would think. Low warmth, low gregariousness, low positive emotions, and he doesn't seem to be particularly excitement seeking. However, as I mentioned before, I think he's high in assertiveness. He does run a business and he is successful. So I think he really splits extroversion with four facets being low and two facets being high. Now agreeableness, this is another one that's pretty easy. I, I said that conscientiousness was the easiest one to score here, but you could make a good argument that agreeableness is pretty easy too. I would say low on all of the facets of agreeableness. And the one that really stands out here, of course, is altruism, very low on altruism. Now in terms of neuroticism, this one is a little different. This one probably more split. We certainly see someone who is depressed and hostile, but it's not really clear if he has anxiety or vulnerability or some of the other facets of neuroticism. So maybe low to mid-range on those and a little higher on depression and hostility. So that's the five-factor model profile that I would guess, of course, he's a fictional character and all we have in terms of information would be what's in the novel. Another theory here that I think is interesting, if you want to conceptualize his personality in a different way, we could look at the dark triad. Right? The dark triad has been studied in recent years. It has three characteristics, psychopathy, 
narcissism, and Machiavellianism. And I actually think that the way the dark triad is looked at, it's subclinical. So somebody can have the dark triad and not have any type of mental disorder. It doesn't rise to a clinical level. So I think with this case of Ebenezer Scrooge, this fictional character, I think he would qualify as having the dark triad. From psychopathy we see being callous and unemotional and anger. From narcissism we see lack of empathy and arrogance. And from Machiavellianism we see someone who's goal-oriented, is strategic, again he works in his business and must have planned that out pretty well to be successful, and he appears to have good impulse control. So I think the dark triad actually makes a lot of sense when thinking about the personality profile of Ebenezer Scrooge. So of course it's all well and good to generate a five-factor model profile for a fictional character, but what can we really learn from this book about personality theory? Can we learn anything about how personality forms or how it could change? And of course the book wasn't intended to give us information about personality theory, but there's one particular passage of this book that I really like. I find it particularly interesting, and I think it does align to some degree with personality theory and can give us some information I think is useful. In the beginning of the book, we know Ebenezer Scrooge goes home and he's going to sleep and he's visited by the ghost of Jacob Marley. Again, Jacob Marley was his business partner who had died. And Jacob Marley is wearing chains. So this is from the book. So Ebenezer Scrooge says, you are fettered, meaning you have chains on. Tell me why. And Jacob Marley replies in a way that I think can be very helpful in understanding a lot of things, including morality issues, but also personality. He says, I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. I girded it on of my own free will, and of my own free will I wore it. So the word girded here means to put something on that goes around the body, like to put on a belt. So in this case, of course, a chain. So I find this really interesting, in particular the link by link and yard by yard piece of this passage. If we think about personality and when people might come in to address personality issues, whether they rise to a clinical level or not, a lot of times people focus on something they can't change, like genetics, they'll talk about that, but they'll also focus on pivotal events, like one particular event defined their personality or was a consequence of their personality. And I think what gets lost here is that personality forms link by link. It's forged link by link over a long amount of time. Now this can be a good thing and a bad thing. Not all personality, of course, is negative. But just for a moment here, I'm going to focus on the negative aspects of personality like the ones we see here with Ebenezer Scrooge. So personality is formed gradually. It's insidious. Again, link by link. It takes a lot of time. It's not something that happens, I believe anyway, it doesn't happen in one pivotal moment. There's not one moment that occurs where somebody's personality kind of changes. Which is a bit ironic, of course, because in A Christmas Carol, of course, Ebenezer Scrooge's personality does change rapidly, but normally we would say that personality doesn't change quickly. It's gradually formed, and there's some ownership for these different aspects of personality. Not to the degree, of course, we see in this passage with free will determining everything. But there are little things we do day in and day out that can help shape our personality, both in a positive and negative direction. We have to be aware that we have some responsibility for some of the negative traits of personality, and on the positive side, we can reverse some of the effects of personality. We can change some of the facets a little bit, especially if we work on it a long time. So you could think of this in terms of breaking that chain apart link by link. It formed that way, and that's how it has to be taken apart. Of course, as I mentioned, a lot of personality is out of our control, but we really can't focus on that. There's nothing that can be done about the genetic piece and other parts of environmental causes that we didn't have any control over. We can only really concentrate on what can be changed. And I would say one of the ways to alter some undesirable personality characteristics would be to look at what can be changed on a day-by-day -day basis. Look at a way to break the links of the chain one at a time. 
So I guess if I set out to write a novel like A Christmas Carol, it would have had Ebenezer having this experience he had in the beginning, but then over a course of years, gradually changing some of his personality traits by changing day-to-day -day habits. Would not have been as exciting as what we saw in the Charles Dickens version there, which of course I think was a very good novel. And it had other themes like morality and redemption that I'm not touching on here. I'm just really looking at it from a very narrow personality perspective. So a couple of takeaways from this video. One would be, be happy that I don't write fictional novels. They wouldn't be very good. And to focus on daily habits to change personality characteristics may be a useful strategy. Maybe one way I think that makes sense to try to alter these characteristics that took so long to form. I hope you found this description of Ebenezer Scrooge and the five-factor model and my thoughts on personality theory to be interesting. Thanks for watching.